His father was a second generation immigrant from Scotland who loved the sea, but chose to run a business school to support his family. family boarded fishing boats every morning and came home with buckets of fish to sell at the market. In 1925, when Bud turned 18, he and his brother Ned saw the gundalo Fannie Mae heading upriver. It was built and operated by Captain Edward Adams using 18th century techniques. Ned, he might be hurt. Oh, that doggone engine here, everything breaking down, and uh, oh, look at this RG Crippenies. <sighs> Captain, you okay? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's just a damn boat. Maybe you guys could help me. Let us cruise our local hardwood forest and Look for oak trees, which is a source of new knee joints. Okay, next we'll have to replace most of the timbers. So step by step, the boys were taught how to create a keel, put in ribs and a transom for a new boat by the last of the shipwrights of the Northeast. After a year in the shipyard, Bud left for four years at Dartmouth College, but he never forgot his work for the captain. I'm looking for the new boat builder, Bud McIntosh. Luckily, Bud's first client came with a design plan for a simple roundabout by William Atkins. So the first build was relatively easy and friends carried the boat to the river. After watching similar roundabouts designed by Crocker and Moeller, Bud arranged a meeting of fellow boat owners and asked them what features should be in a new design. 
The list included a powered cabin cruiser with one mask, one round bottom, and long enough to qualify as a yacht. Slowly, over the next 12 days, Bud drew out the dimensions for the front, side, and top views of the ideal boat. His plan was proportional to the scale of the length, height, and width of the boat. Next, Bud painted several sheets of plywood in preparation for transferring the actual dimensions to a solid surface. and identify any points on the plan, such as the tip of the bow, and mark it from the vertical and horizontal scales. Once the points were determined, you could cut a series of eight white panel molds that will be used for the needed shape of the sloop. The next step is to build up and then trim a ballast keel to serve as the backbone of the sloop. The pattern was traced by setting roofing nails along the lines of the plan and then marking the pattern on the piece of wood to be cut. Once the pattern was cut at the bandsaw, Bud attached these parts to the keel by clamping and then drilling and bolting them together. The next step is to create and mount vertical section of the rear of the boat that's called a transom. Wow, Ned, adding those forms will really reveal the shape of this boat. The rest of construction followed as smoothly as the 8 p.m. high tide. There was the temporary addition of nine steam vent strips of fern to hold the molds in place before the planking was applied. Hey Ned, they're delivering the sloop's inboard engine. And place our engine in its final location. And by that time, my friend in Maine will finish and deliver the spar and some sails. For I have no greater desire than to bring my father outside to see us launch our completed sloop in the river. And if it's a good day, my dream would be to take him to the ocean in a craft that you and I built with our own hands.
he built a reputation of designing seaworthy craft, plainly finished and reasonably priced. where he famously stood in his backyard and pointed out. So even that barge, that clumsy looking thing, is beautiful. If it is exactly right to do what it is supposed to do. After that, customers sought out his little shop because he gave clients a square deal with high craftsmanship. That included an oak frame, pine planking, an interior finish, complete with an engine for $3,800. Bud shop and operation was a small one, needing only a new apprentice for one or two employees. Swifty recalled after five years of employment. He thought he was having a great day when he put on two planks around a 39-foot cutter one day. He told Bud that he guessed he was a boat builder. Many visitors dropped by the Macintosh shop to discuss their own projects and always found Bud willing to offer suggestions and even craft a needed part. He had no boat building experience at all. During most visits, he learned a new technique or he left with Bud's sketch on the next step or he found his Nash Rambler loaded with something you may need. After that project, he went on to build seven boats from Bud's designs, including a cutter, a lobster boat, and a barge large enough to need an anchor. Of course, Smith went on to build seven apple doors and sail two of them around the world. 